welcome to my allotment. It's the beginning of June. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you'll get lots of hints and tips from my allotment, my home garden, and also my home kitchen. It's a really busy time of year this year, but don't feel overwhelmed because there's plenty of time. And if you just schedule everything, you will get everything done. So I'm going to give, be giving you some top tips on some of the things I've been doing. So in particular, I'm going to be digging my garlic to see how that's getting on. I'm going to be giving you some top tips about making your own fertiliser and also some top tips about how I sow my spring onions. Now, one thing to remember this time of year is everything grows really quickly and that does include the weeds. We came up here this morning and do you know what? I couldn't believe how much the weeds have grown. So we've cut a lot of the stuff down. Um, but as you can see, we've left a little bit here just to see like, what we were faced with. And that was only, you know, it, it can happen over the course of a week or so. It can really catch up on you. So you've got to keep on, on check of it. Um, so as you can see, my globe artichokes are doing absolutely fantastically. They're all starting to fall here. Um, this is the biggest it's ever been. So I think that's got to be the rain that we've had over the last few weeks. My rhubarb, I came up here earlier today and I pulled some because I wanted to make some jam and some chutney. Um, but it will obviously all grow back. The pear tree is coming on really, really nicely, as are the raspberries. You can see the little buds forming there, so it won't be too long, and we will have some raspberries, as is the cherry tree and the blackberries as well. Lots of little buds on there, so that's really positive. The gooseberries, I had to cover them, because like most years, the birds attack them. But as you can see, underneath the cover, we've got little gooseberries forming, and they're filling out really nicely. So if we don't cover them, we wouldn't have any, so... I put this cover over there and then I then I will pick them when they're ready. So the cabbages and the cow are doing really, really well. They're covered because the birds will get them if I don't cover them. And also there's white cabbage back aside, which I've already seen around. So I don't know if you remember, but I planted out my chard not that long ago. Unfortunately, I didn't cover it and the birds attacked it. So that's a lesson to me to keep it covered. But as you can see, it is actually starting to grow back. You know, worst case scenario, I can start some more off. It's not a difficult thing to do. But I've covered it and you can actually see little leaves sprout in there. So that's really positive. So as we move down, the onions are coming on really nicely. I weeded them the other day because they were starting to get a little bit weedy. The broad beans are looking really good as well. As you can see, little blooms are forming on them. I've even got the odd little bean. I'm going to have to tie some of these up a little bit because some of them aren't holding their own. But as you can see, they are starting to come on. I've got my garlic here, and there are lots of questions of when you pick your garlic or when you dig your garlic. Um, it does all depend when you planted it, to be fair. This went in towards the end of October. And what you're looking for is for the stems to have filled out. You're also looking for the lower leaves to have started to go brown. So, but because with onions, you see the onion right on the top, so you can see when it's ready. With garlic, you can't because it's planted much further down. So if you just get your fork, I'm just going to lift one just to see how they are. And if they're ready, then obviously I know I can dig them. And um, if not, I'll have to just gently ease it back in and leave it for a little bit longer. So let's take a look. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Lovely plump garlic. So I won't just dig them all up. I will ease them all up gently because they might not all be as far on as that. But that looks really, really good. That's exactly what I want. Now I can eat that as wet garlic or I can let it dry and store it. So I'll probably do a little bit of both with my garlic this year because I've got such a good selection. As we move over, the dahlias are starting to sprout. So that's brilliant. That's my cut flowers for the summer. So a really good flower to grow because they just keep coming and they're so incredibly beautiful. So the potatoes, I've started earthing them up because they've started um, growing really, really well. So I earth mine as they grow up. Some people just earth them up straight away. I do them um, over time. If we move over, my seeds are doing really fantastically. The best they've probably ever done. I think all that rain that we had and then the really warm weather has given me such good germination. So I'm really pleased with those. My carrots, my beetroots, my parsnips, my radishes and my lettuces are looking absolutely fantastic. Now, something that I often struggle with is my spring onions. I sow them and nothing happens or barely anything happens. But I had a recommendation by someone who I know really, really well, an RHS gardener, and he suggested rather than direct sowing them, just put the seeds between some moist tissue in a container and let them sprout. So they've been in there probably a week or so sprouting. And as you can see, they've germinated really well. And a little bit like leeks, you drop them into the ground. So 
if I just get a little tent peg and all I do is just make a little a little round hole. I wouldn't use a dibber because they're not you wouldn't want a hole that big. Just gently tease one out and then you just pop it in there. Now I remember when I did this last year and I thought, oh gosh, this is never gonna work, they're so delicate. I'm gonna ruin them. But actually it worked really, really well. So you just gently tease the roots into the ground and then obviously water them. And, and I've got two rows. I've got one row there and one row there. So let's see how they do this year. As we move over to the beans, they've started to come through. You can see little beans, little French beans just popping through the ground there. So that's really good. As we move over, we've got the courgettes and the squashes and the pumpkins. Now I don't plant them all out in one go. I plant a few out at a time because sometimes the slugs can really damage them. And the weather can be a little bit hit or miss. Even though we think that the weather's going to be fine, you never know. I don't want to lose them all. So I've got various different varieties out here of squashes, courgettes and pumpkins. And I will be putting more out because it's something I really love because they store so incredibly well, the squashes. So it's something that, you know, it's, it feeds me through the winter, basically, into the early spring. As we move up, the black currants are doing really well as well. As you can see, the little berries are just starting to form which is really awesome. I love black currants. You can do lots of things with them, jam, puddings, gin, all sorts of lovely delights. As we move up, my own fertilizer. So I've got an old drum here that I acquired and I put comfrey in there. So you can see this is comfrey over here, very distinctive by the leaves and you just break it off already put some in, put it into the water butt, so I've already got some in there already, and then basically fill it with water and you create your own feed. I've got a tap on the bottom, so I siphon it off and I dilute it down with water and I use that as my own natural feed. I do buy feed as well, but I do like to get natural ones as well, it's, it's a freebie really from nature. So I do hope that this has really helped you. And if you want any more hints and tips, obviously subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions or queries, then please do put them in the comments and we will answer them and do the best we can to 